Estella, welcome to the Workplay Podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. I am like so excited for people to like kind of just binge who you are because obviously we love you over at Workplay Branding. Um, and I want people to just get to know you because you are like our West Coast bestie over here. <laughs> like, tell us a little more about how, like, who on the Workplay team or you know, workplace clients that you work with, where you're at, what's going on? Yeah, I right now I'm in Seattle. So I have a lot of clients in Seattle. And then I've been going to Boise and a little bit in the greater Seattle area. So down closer to Portland. Um, Soon I will be transitioning a little bit to a couple other states. Um, But yeah, I have lots of fun clients up here in Seattle. you kind of have everything up here. So I've been grateful to work with people of all different, um, in all different places. And so that's super cool. Yeah, I love that. And I love how you're moving into like the Southwest region as well. And kind of like taking over there in terms of work play, which is so cool. And we'll like kind of jump into that move in a minute. But I would love to know like more about like your origin story. Like, how did you get into this? What, you know, what even like inspires you in this? Because I just feel like not everyone can do this job. So I'm always very curious why, you know, you are in this position that you're in and how you even got here. Yeah, totally. Um, Well, my dad actually from like my whole life had always had a camera with him everywhere we went. And so from honestly, like the amount of cannons we have in this house is a little bit crazy just like every version every time one came out so because of that I feel like I was the oldest and so I would always like want to take photos and like shadow after him and so I always brought my camera to college I in high school I did everyone's senior photos and it was just kind of something I did as my love and everybody was like you need to do more with it you're so gifted so as college went on I kind of applied it more in my internships and I did a lot of content in a lot of different aspects um and I kept kind of doing it for fun on the side and that's really where my love for photography started and I think for a lot of people um being in front of the camera is scary and I don't think that's how it should be because once you do get those photos it's really cool because it totally plays into like your story and who you are and so I just love to be able to make people feel as comfortable as they can in front of a camera because that's how I learned And I think once people feel comfortable, they realize that it's so exciting to be in front of the camera and create your brand. When you were learning about all of this, were you like doing classes? Were you figuring it out yourself? Like, what was that like when you're learning how the camera worked? Yeah. So a lot of it I learned from my dad and it would just be like going over settings over and over again. Like, oh, you need to bump this, you need to do this. And then in high school, as I started getting more interested, I took a couple of photography classes. It was like basic fundamentals and then more like studio based. And then when I went to college, I worked alongside a lot of, um, like I had a couple of jobs where I worked as- as- aside someone who that was their full-time job. So they kind of were able to mentor me in that like internship role to learn more from different sides of things. So like whether it was working photo and video for a spin studio or for more of like um, an establishment, I got to kind of learn the different routes to that. And then also in college, I majored in digital uh, design. And so we learned a lot and did a lot on the camera and like editing. So that was really cool. And that's kind of So just kind of a little bit of classes sprinkled through all of those years. Yeah, I think it's cool because it sounds like you've really gotten a good sense of like all different angles of, you know, just digital photography in general. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like that helps you when you're setting up a scene, when you're in front of a client and they're asking you like, what do you want this scene to be and all of these things like you can kind of see the through line between like the start and the finish of a project totally. where yeah I think sometimes people who just get into photography like they can't see that through line and so they make different decisions when they're behind the camera 
Yeah, I feel like it's totally like you're trying to tell like a story and sometimes people get lost in just trying to capture like the moment or like a photo and it really is like how you portray that in like the long term and like the full shoot because if you get lost in that then you're not going to be able to like create all the different moments all the different scenes yeah I totally agree totally agree you are like one of the most organized people I know you're so thorough and just like when you were explaining uh like all the different classes that you were taking in college I'm like yep that checks out that sounds like (laughs) so (laughs) How do you think like your like just knack for organization helps you on a shoot with a work play client? Yeah. Um, well, I think that with me, like everything in my mind is like when I go into a shoot, it's like a checklist and I always have like mental notes that I'm just constantly thinking of. And that's kind of how I'm able to like really get through everything and kind of, I like to be super busy all the time. So for me, like, I always just am thinking one step or two steps ahead. So I think for a workplace shoot, for example, like I'm always scanning to look at different opportunities, different places, maybe in that location we are. And with the content plan, I, I like, I swear sometimes I have like photographic like memory. Cause I'll be like in my head, I'm like seeing the images off a of Pinterest board. And so I keep, as we're taking photos in one scene, I'm looking for the next location that we're going to take those next Pinterest board. And so I think for me, like keeping that organization just like with me and like my brain and like figuring it all out really helps me stay on track because I'm a very like timely person. So I'm always thinking, okay, we have two minutes more here, but if we see something else, how can we like turn this and get over here for a little bit before we need to leave for the next location? But I think I keep it all in my head. So it's really helpful from like a client's perspective because I don't show like any stress because it's kind of like all in my head and I'm thinking kind of like five steps ahead when they're probably just thinking about that current photo. Totally. And were you always like that or was this something that you were in like in college or uh, I, cause I love that. And I think that's, it's a rare trait to be almost like two, three steps ahead in anything that you're doing. And I just always feel like you're like that. You're always like, even before this call, you were like, Hey, where's the, where's the link? And I'm like, dang, like she's already asking for the link. Am I late? And no, it's just like half an hour before. So you're always like, you are always like one step ahead, which I love, but is this like something that you were taught or have you always just been like that? Um, well, I'm the oldest of two other siblings. And I think for me, like, they're both younger than me. So I like, my parents both worked full time. So I was always like, doing a lot like at our house and helping my mom. And so I think because of that, and my mom is very like similar to me. And so I think because of that, I just kind of always was like trying to take on as much as I can. And that's always what I say, like, is my biggest weakness is sometimes I try to do too much. And it's like, because I can keep saying yes to things and I can get it done, but then I always spread myself thin. But I think that I've learned how to like work that together. But I think honestly, it's my parents like to say, like it's how I've been since I was like three years old. I was always trying to like figure out everything and get everything done, whether it was like, mom, like my sister needs this, 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 like, it's just kind of how I always have been. So yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, it makes for a really great (laughs) work play content creator. (laughs) So I'm happy that you're like that. When it comes to like shoots in general, what do you think is the biggest misconception that work play clients have going into their first work play shoot? Yeah, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is people are like stressed and scared that like it's really intense and like we need to like not be like talkative and friendly and we need to just get stuff done but the thing is is like the more you're relaxed and excited and loosened up that's how we're gonna get the best out of your content and so i think people go into it feeling like it's like a business meeting and like we it's really serious and really the more fun we have the better content we're gonna get and so i think that when people do kind of once you literally get 10 minutes into like your first shoot you're gonna realize like this is a fun day. Like I had a client this week who she was stressed and she was like, I was so nervous last night. But then it was like the second that we like met and we're sitting there having our first 10 minutes where we kind of go over the full shoot. She's like, 
oh my goodness, I did not need to be stressed. Like this is so fun and friendly. Like, so I think that's probably the biggest misconception I've seen through a lot of my clients. Cause I've had a lot of quarter one, like first timers. So. Yeah. And I agree with you, but it is hard. Like as a business owner, it's so hard to kind of like let go and be like, okay, like let's have fun when it does feel like, cause you are creating the visuals for business. It does feel like, oh, I got to get everything in. And like, if I don't get everything in, then like it's a waste. But I agree with you. Like you do have to like kind of trust that, you know, Estella is going to know what she's doing. And I think that's what makes work like content creators a little different. Cause like all we do is work with business owners. It's like, we, we know how you guys are. <laughs> we know that you need the shot. For someone who's feeling like, okay, I'm feeling nervous. I'm, you know, getting anxiety about my shoot. Like what should they do maybe a week out, day before, even like a month out? How should they be preparing? Yeah. Um, I think my biggest recommendation is like, look up Pinterest boards, make your Pinterest boards, because as you make a Pinterest board, that even could be separate. You can kind of look through how people may pose, how people may do this. Of course, we're going to guide you through all of that, but it's going to make it feel less uncomfortable if you kind of have ideas of what you do like and don't like. I think also laying out your outfits, literally having a list of where you want to have what outfit, because if you kind of have that mental note of where you want your outfits, and kind of have them strategically placed, you're not going to feel as stressed out going into the, the next week, that next morning. Um, so who, when I've had people and they write down their outfits in our sp- space on our content plan, I think then they feel way less pressure of like figuring out. Um, I think also just, I mean, as much as it sounds like weird, just kind of getting comfortable in front of a mirror, like practicing like what your normal smile is like I think a lot or like laughing in front of the mirror I think sometimes people get so nervous in front of the camera that their true smile doesn't come out so I think as you prepare like just smile in front of the camera like kind of laugh look in the mirror just kind of start to get comfortable and you can do any of those things or none of them but I think that those are kind of my recommendations because I hate being in front of the camera and so that's like what I've always done to kind of help me feel more comfortable because if I kind of see the overview of like poses my smile then I feel more confident going in and being led by someone else yeah I totally agree I was actually just shooting um someone at a pop-up event and it was so funny because she was like oh I love my natural smile and I love the way that looks but then like it's almost like when she got in front of the camera she couldn't get that out of herself and like she almost thought overthought it too much and it's like no you really all you have to do is like fake laugh and like you know your natural smile is gonna come out and then you're gonna like the photo so it's interesting like you really have to kind of like put yourself like like really talk to yourself of like all right I'm gonna fake laugh here and I'm gonna you know you can't just show up and just like smile at the camera right It's got to be like this natural essence. Exactly. I mean, we always joke like some of my clients, it's like they forget how to walk when we're taking photos. It's like all these things that you do every day, just you kind of have to keep doing them because the second you think too much about it, it's like, okay, I'm going to have you walk across here. I'm going to get some blurry photos. And then it's like, oh my gosh, how I can, I'm tripping. Like I can't walk. So it's like the more you loosen up and kind of just like, fake laugh like it helps to just turn around for a second and like get prepared and then turn back to the camera but yeah I know it's so funny you have to like almost go into character like you are not playing yourself anymore you're playing a character of whatever the goal of the shoot is and you have to like get into that energy and then I feel like that makes it easier to kind of like be less insecure because you're like oh I'm just playing a character like I'm acting this is like not me I don't need to feel embarrassed right now I just need to play this character and then I can go back to being me exactly (laughs) no exactly I love it okay so what do you think workplace clients could do better on workplace shoots in order to get better results yeah um let's see here 
I think that sometimes um, for workplace clients, like you have those four quarters a year, you have those four shoots. And so I think sometimes when people, especially on their first one, like I had a client recently and she kind of was like, after we got through the whole day, she was like, whoa, we did so much. Like I could have probably spread out the locations a little bit and not have stress as much. Cause she was like, we have like three more of these and we have been shooting all day. Like, so I think honestly, like, um, having for your first one, especially going into it, like still strong, like we're going to get a lot done, but I think that it takes one to get to that point that like, you're still going to get such a strong base on that first one. But I think honestly, for your guys' sake, maybe going into that first one with like, not as much of that, like, okay, we're going to do 12 locations like this, 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 because I think all the clients that I've seen that they kind of shorten that first one and we kind of stick into those maybe like four five or six locations really hard, then they feel way more comfortable about like the future and how they're going to go from that shoot to the next shoot. So I think maybe just lowering the expectations for the first one in terms of like maybe outfits, locations, so that you can get that comfortable, you can get that. And then maybe we add those four extra ones at the next shoot because you're going to feel so much better about getting that all done fast in one day. I'm so glad that you brought that up because I just think I I totally agree with you. It's like you can get really strong base content, but remember in literally two months, you're going to be doing another one to be launched in that next month. So it's like you get to be really strategic in small pockets of your visuals and like because you get to be very strategic in like these one to three locations, or maybe you're just shooting for one thing and not like your whole business, <laughs> then you can get really creative in that one thing. I feel like you've done like really creative shoots where it's just like, they just go all in on this one creative vision for one shoot. And you get actually so much more out of it because you're not like watering down each location, just trying to get to the next, I feel like. Exactly. And I feel like the more time you have in those like locations to get comfortable and like maybe you have two objectives for like two different campaigns you're going to launch. If you dive into those two and the, those hours that were together, then you're going to be able to like get the actually true good content without having to feel stressed and scrammed through the rest of it. Yeah. And I think as a content creator too, like you are also needing to figure out the person in front of you and so if there is more space and time to do that I think the ability to sync up like your energy together your flow together has just more time and it's just a little bit easier although like we can do you know the 15 outfits the 10 locations like we can do that but I just think that you it feels better when it's less and you're expanding the whole day on on less if that makes sense yeah no exactly I agree with you it's like we can do the 12 but I feel like uh I had a shoot this week where we had only four locations and um we were able it was her first one and we were able to like get such like ever she was like wait you she's like, that's me. Like, and then it was like the second location, wait, like, and it was like, she was so amazed by how much we could get in those four locations. And it looks like we probably did like, honestly, like 15 locations because of how versatile, I mean, it's like one location, you can get like almost 16 different looks in sometimes or more. Totally. And like, if you're so in sync with each other and like in this flow, you're, you're wanting to like try new things. You're wanting to get different angles. It's just like, I can't tell you how much I feel like the more, um, seasoned workplay members, like they understand that. And so you see like these huge campaigns and you're like, wow, she must've done that like in 10 different locations. Like actually, no, we just did that in two. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> I love it. What do you think is your favorite part of doing workplace shoots? Like what like aspect of this job do you think is your favorite? Oh, that's hard. I think that honestly, like connecting with all of the different clients is so special because I am able to meet you guys. And honestly, that first kind of 30 minutes, I kind of hear more about you, what you're like, where you are, what location you're from, kind of like who you are in like 20 minutes. And I think once 
I make those connections with people, it really helps like a content creator be able to like get your vision and like really get in sync with you. But through that, I've made like, it's so cool to get to know everyone's story more about them, what they do. So I think my favorite part is honestly just getting to really get close and have really uh, fun conversations with the clients. And sometimes then like, we'll be, it'll be like a quick 20 minute talk while we're like on a drive somewhere. And then we don't really talk much about it till like we have lunch together or something, but it's fun. Cause like you're meeting someone in one day. And I think the, cl- like the connection you're able to make with them, like always stands out to me. And then when I get home or onto the plane or waiting to get like a uh, board onto my plane, I go through the photos and it's so cool to kind of see like, from start to finish those like 6,000 photos that we have to go through or more sometimes like how that like um like how your personality came out through those photos and like through those different locations so I think just making that personal connection because it it I always look back and I'm like oh that was this person like that was so special like oh that, you know and it's like it's super cool because you're just with each other for a couple I mean like a, a day but like it's not it's not that long and you're able to like get really close and get those intimate like photos. And I don't know, that's probably my favorite part is just getting to see that play out in the photos. Yeah. I feel like we really got to understand the brand so well and like the person. So not even just the brand, but the person. And then you're able to just create even better, even like the next time that you shoot with them. Cause it's like this connection has been made. And I think people don't understand how important that connection is with like a creative partner. You have to be on the same page as them. And so it goes both ways. And I feel like people don't believe me when I'm like, no, like the whole work play team loves connecting with, you know, each and every brand. Like that's what I think makes this team so special. It's so much fun. Yeah, because I've had, like, honestly, the most, like, opposite types of brands, like, from one side of the spectrum to other. And it's, like, so cool to, like, see all the different brands and meet the different people and, like, get those connections and get to meet you and, like, see how you impact the world with your brand. And it's, I don't know, it's super special. I agree. I agree. To round us off, I am going to do a little rapid fire questions with you. I'm super excited to hear your answers. Um, Okay. So I'm going to give you a list of questions and you're just going to rapid fire the answers as best as you can. If you need an explanation, that's okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. You're ready? Yeah. Okay. What's your ideal photo shoot weather conditions? Rain, snow, sun, like direct sun, um, <laughs> or like a cloudy day, cloudy day. Okay. Um, what is, what's like the typical temperature though? Like, are we in summer? Are we in winter? Fall? Like, like 65 to 75. Okay. Like a any, Seattle any summer, a Seattle summer. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Phoenix summer. Uh, yeah. Well, if it was in Phoenix, it'd be like different temperature. So <laughs> maybe like 80 to 90 but overcast okay got it cool um what is your ideal flight time are you more of like a one hour two hour or like do you like the long like five hour flights um my 45 minute to Boise is probably my favorite it's so easy and it's like as soon as we get up we go back down (laughs) so I love that did you have to go on the propeller plane to get to Boise from Um, Seattle it's not Um, I don't think it's a it's just like a tiny Alaska one like it's just like two it's like still a small size but it's not propeller Okay, when I was going to Boise, it was a propeller plane, and every single time I was, like, terrified. I will <laughs> say, time. going into Boise is literally the worst turbulence ever, and yes, the people sitting is. next to me are always, like, losing their mind, but I'm used to it. So I either say, like, 45 minutes, or I like a longer one, because if it's kind of that in-between, I feel like it's kind of, like, you don't get settled. Like, I either want to get into a good movie or into, like, some work. Or I want to be like in and out. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, no, I totally agree. I love my like six and a half hour flights, like Seattle to Miami. 
because I just like get settled in. I'm like, all right, I'm here. Nothing I can do about it. Let's go. I know, it's like movie, <laughs> then maybe some work, another movie. Like you're able to actually kind of like, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. 45 minutes or like four plus hours. Totally. Favorite airline for workplace shoots? Alaska. I, I feel you. I'm so <laughs> sad I don't I'm on the East Coast. I'm like, ah. Yeah, Alaska okay. will stay true. My top forever. Uh, I know. <laughs> I feel you. Their referral program is so good. It like pains me that we don't have it on the East Coast. Favorite city to shoot in? Ooh. Um, I think honestly, like, like for work play clients. I would yeah. uh, say probably Seattle. I'm so comfortable with like all of my spots here. And like, I'd say I'm starting to get more comfortable in other places, but like Seattle just, you can literally have like, it look like a California beach and then you can look like you're in downtown and you can look like you're in the tropical rain for it. Like you literally can get every look in like all 30 minutes of each other. Like, so I think probably Seattle would take that for me. Yeah, it has a lot of range. It's kind of like Miami. It's like we could do a lot. City that you want to shoot in. So like a bucket list city. Um, Sydney, Australia. <laughs> you know that we're we're planning on opening up in Australia. So okay, well, might be options for you. But I also <laughs> like I anywhere like anywhere out of the U.S. Like. I'm mm. really excited. Just, I love traveling. So I think that it's so fun to be able to find like new places and new cities, but Sydney is definitely one where like I have a Pinterest board of like so many like different places that I just want to go and shoot at. <laughs> I love it. Okay. We're going to make it happen in 2025. Favorite scene or like type of location, like coffee shop, beach. What's your favorite? Ooh, um, I think my favorite, honestly, is street scenes. Um, I would say I just feel like you can have so much fun, like on a street. Uh, but also like more like location based. I would say I also love like a good. Um. Oh, now I'm like thinking about. Yeah, I would say street scenes, and then in Seattle, if you do the ferry, ferry scenes are really fun too. Oh, cool. And my last rapid fire question for you is your favorite workplace shoot thus far. And you can give us a little explanation on why. Okay. Let me think real quick. I, I think that, oh, that is hard. Um, <laughs> Although all of your workplace clients are like, okay, if you don't choose me, I know. we're going to have I honestly think <laughs> like all of them have had like favorite aspects in different ways, but I do think um, I had a shoot with uh, Megan um, and it was her first quarter, first shoot ever with Workplay. She is from Seattle um, or she's not from Seattle. She had, she moved to Seattle like during uh, COVID and like we had so much fun. Just like we had like a total Seattle day. It was like started kind of in South Seattle. Then we went to like downtown then it was like, we literally made our way everywhere and she just has such a cool brand and so much that like impacts the world. And it was just so cool to like see that portray. And I just feel like we got so much content and so much locations and it was just so fun. And yeah, I think that was my favorite. It was just like so special and really cool to see how that day unfolded, especially for how many locations we had on our first shoot ever with wordplay. I remember seeing that the creative on that and I was like dang like I didn't even recognize her like you did so well I well not that you did well by not making her recognizable it was just like so creative and like the angles and like how the framing was it was so cool thank you <laughs> I love it Thank you, Asilla, so much for coming on the Workplay Podcast. If you guys listening want to book Estella, 
and you're a Workplay client, of course, just let us know and you can request Estella. She's going to be moving to Phoenix, which is so much fun. So all of our Phoenix people are going to get a local content creator. I'm so excited. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'm so excited to see everyone. And um, I won't be far away from Seattle still, but um, yeah, thank you guys for having me and I'm excited to <laughs> work with you maybe. Yeah. And if you are in Seattle, you can still request Estella. She'll just have to hop on a plane to get to you. 